What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Sean Robert Johnson. As you know, I'm incarcerated at New Jersey State Prison in Trent, New Jersey. I appreciate y'all tuning in to today's episode that we got for y'all, so let's just get straight to it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Prison Audio with Sean Robert Johnson. That's me, your host. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Prison Audio. Also, at Shaw John twelve twenty two, which is S H A W J O H N one two two two, and don't forget to become a subscriber for free on both of our YouTube channels, at Prison Audio, and also at Shaw Robert Johnson, and I have my direct contact information at the end of the episode. So today I have a few prison news I want to talk to y'all about, whether you may have heard about them or not. And the first article is about six inmates who sued New York over its prison lockdown order will get to view solar eclipse after all. In New York, six inmates who sued New York's Corrections Department over its decision to lock down prisons during next Monday's total solar eclipse will get to watch the celestial event after all. So we talk about tomorrow. Lawyers for the six men incarcerated at the Woodborn Correctional Facility in upstate New York said Thursday that they reached a settlement with the state that will allow the men to view the solar eclipse in accordance with their sincerely held religious beliefs. They filed a federal suit last week arguing that April 8th lockdown violates inmates' constitutional rights to practice their faith by preventing them from taking part in a religiously significant event. The six men include a Baptist, a Muslim, a seven-day Adventist, two practitioners of Santeria, and an atheist. Thomas Malley, a spokesperson for the Corrections Department, said the department has agreed to permit the six individuals to view the eclipse while plaintiffs have agreed to drop their suit with prejudice. The lawsuit came to an appropriate resolution. He added in an email statement. The department said earlier this week that it takes all requests for religious accommodations under consideration and that those related to viewing the eclipse were currently under review. Daniel Martucello, the third, the department's acting commissioner, issued a memo last month ordering all incarcerated in individuals to remain in their housing units next Monday, when we talk about tomorrow, from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., which are generally the normal hours for outdoor, recre outdoor recreation in prisons. He said the department will distribute solar eclipse safety glasses for staff and inmates at prisons in the path of totality so they can view the eclipse from their assigned work location or housing units. Communities in western and northern reaches of the state are expected to have the best view of the moment when the moon passes between the earth and the sun, temporarily blocking the sun. So this is happening tomorrow, so shout out to them. They, they won their lawsuit and they are able to be able to see the eclipse. And I think that's been something going on everywhere because we got a memo through our JPay provider saying the same thing during the afternoon yards. Uh, nobody won't be permitted outside, so nobody filed a lawsuit over here about that. But, you know, well, shout out to them that they want it. The second article is, is about the Democratic congressman unveiled bill to rename a federal prison after Trump. In Washington, three Democratic congressmen unveiled legislation Friday to rename a federal prison in Miami after former President Donald Trump. The bill, offered by Reps Gary Conley of Virginia, Jared Moskowski, Moskow, Jared Moskowitz of Florida, and John Garamendi of California, comes in response to a measure introduced by a group of House Republicans to rename Washington Dooley's International Airport after Trump. The Democrats' bill would rename the Miami Federal Correctional Institution in Florida the Donald J. Trump Federal Correctional Institution. When our Republican colleagues introduced their bill to rename Dooley's after Donald Trump, I said the more fitting option would be to rename a federal prison. Connolly said in a statement, I hope our Republican friends will join us in bestowing upon Donald J. Trump the only honor he truly deserves. Trump is facing multiple federal criminal, federal criminal charges in Florida for allegedly mishandling sensitive government, including willful retention of national defense information, false statements and representations, conspiracy to obstruct justice, withholding a document or record, and corruptly concealing a document. He has pleaded not guilty and is awaiting a new trial date in the case. 
Trump is also facing state criminal charges in New York where he's been accused of falsifying business records related to a hush money payment paid to adult film star Stormy Daniels in the closing days of the 2016 presidential election. He's pleaded not guilty in that case, which is scheduled to begin jury selection on April 15. The former president has been charged with illegally trying to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election in Georgia State Court and in federal court in Washington, D.C. Trial dates have not been set in either case, and a D.C. case is on hold pending resolution of Trump's appeal that he's protected by presidential, by presidential immunity. The U.S. Supreme Court is set to hear arguments on that appeal on April 25th. Trump has pleaded not guilty in both cases. Everyone knows President Trump loves to write his name in gold letters on all his buildings, Mouskowitz said. Moskowitz said, but he's never had his name on a federal building before, and as a public servant, I just want to help the former president, help us make that dream a reality. The bill to rename Dewey's after Trump was filed last Friday. It was sponsored by Rep. Guy Reston Teller, a Republican from PA, the chief deputy majority whip, and co-sponsored by six other Republicans, Reps Michael Waltz of Florida, Andrew Oglis of Tennessee, Chuck Fleishman of Tennessee, Paul Goser of Arizona, Barry Moore of Alabama, and Troy Niles of Texas. Reskin, Reskin Teller, Reskin Teller tweeted about the effort earlier this week, freedom, prosperity, strength. That's what America stands, that's what America stood for under the leadership of President Donald Trump, the best president of my lifetime which he wrote in the post on X, and that's why I'm introducing legislation to rename Dooley's as the Donald J. Trump International Airport. The airport opened in 1962. is named after John Fawcett Dulles, who served as, as Secretary of State under President Dwight D. Eisenhower from 1953 to 1959. So, so you're trying to address it up and saying, oh, we're just doing it because Trump is about to go to jail and all that, but, hey, I guess they want to get Trump a... Uh, a name on a building, and some of these names I be they be having some 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 long last names. So my apologies if I miss miss spoke anybody's last name. All right, the third article I want to talk about is Diddy's former protege G. Depp free from prison after 13 years. G. Depp Coleman, once mentored by Diddy, has emerged from prison after completing a 13 year sentence for murder. The 49 year old rapper shared his emotional reunion with friends and family on Thursday via his Instagram page, marking a significant moment in his journey to freedom. His release comes four months after receiving clemency from New York Governor K.V. Huska. According to records from the, from, the York, from the New York State Department of Corrections and Community Supervision, G. Debt was granted release under the prison's limited credit time allowance program. This initiative provides eligible inmates with a six-month credit on their existing sentence. Despite his release, Coleman will be subjected to certain conditions, including regular check-ins with his parole officer, adherence to weapon, drug possession restrictions, unless medically authorized, and obtaining permission for out-of-state travel. Coleman's legal saga began in 2010 when he turned himself in for an involvement in a nearly two-decade-old cold murder case. He was convicted in 2012 for the murder of John Henkel. With hits like special delivery and let's get it, he contributed to shaping the sound of the era and popularized the Harlem Shake dance trend in the early 2000s. However, his career took a downturn by the late 2010s, marked by a series of legal troubles, including, arrest, including arrests related to drug possession, trespassing, and other charges. So shout out for, to G. Depp for finally, being, for finally being released from prison, right? I already know how it is when you're going through the experience. So for him to make a home, you know, that's a blessing right there. So, you know, hopefully here's some new music from him. And the last article is about judge appoint special master to oversee California federal women's prison after rampant abuse. In Oakland, California, in Oakland, California, a judge on Friday appointed a special master to oversee a troubled federal women's prison in California's known for rampant sexual abuse against inmates. 
a 2021 Associated Press investigation that found a culture of abuse and cover-ups at the Federal Correctional Institution in Dublin brought increased scrutiny from Congress and the Bureau of Prisons. The low-security prison in this adjacent minimum security satellite camp located about 21 miles east of Oakland have more than 600 inmates. U.S. District Judge Javon Gonzalez Rogers named Wendy Still, a veteran corrections and probation official with extensive experience coordinating compliance with the Federal Prison Rape Elimination Act, which she known as PRIA, as the special master. The judge also appointed several staff members to assist her. In appointing Still, the judge says she and her team shall have full access to FCI Dublin, all his records, and all physical facilities. The warren shall take all steps to ensure such access, such access, the judge directed. Last month, when she ordered the special master, Rogers, called the prison a dysfunctional mess, she added that the Bureau of Prison has proceeded sluggishly with intentional disregard of the inmates' constitutional rights despite being fully apprised of the situation for years. The repeated installation of BOP leadership who failed to grasp and address the situation strains credibility. The appointment of a special master is part of a federal lawsuit filed in August by eight inmates and the advocacy group California Coalition for Women Prisoners. They allege that sexual abuse and exploitation has not stopped despite the prosecution of the former warden and several former officers. This unprecedented decision on the need for oversight shows that the courageous incarcerated people, community, and dedicated lawyers can collectively challenge the impunity of the federal government and bureaus of prison. Emily Shapiro, a member of California Coalition for Women's Prisoners, said in a statement last month, FCI Dublin opened in 1974 and was converted in 2012 to one of six women-only facilities in the federal prison system. The prison has housed well-known inmates, including actors Felicity Huffman and Lori Laughlin from the Varsity Blues College Admission Bribery Scandal. FCI Dublin sexual abuse scandal has been one of the many troubles plaguing the Bureau, which is also beset by rampant staffing shortages, suicides, and security breaches. Since 2021, at least eight FCI Dublin employees have been charged with sexually abusing inmates. Five have pleaded guilty. Two were convicted at trial. Another case is pending. Roughly 50 civil rights lawsuits against FCI Dublin employees are also ongoing. Rogers wrote that in making this extraordinary decision, Rogers wrote that in making this extraordinary decision, the court grounds itself in BOP's repeated failure to ensure that the extraordinary history of this facility is never repeated. All sexual activity between a prison worker and an inmate is illegal. Correctional employees enjoy substantial power over inmates, controlling every aspect of their lives from mealtime to lights out and there is no scenario in which an inmate can give consent. Rogers made an unannounced visit to the prison February 14th, touring a facility in a satellite camp for nine hours. She spoke, within, she spoke with at least 100 inmates as well as staff. Many of the inmates told her that they did not fear sexual misconduct and said no when asked if it was still prevalent at the prison, Rogers wrote. Still... The plaintiffs in August lawsuit have presented incidents of sexual misconduct that occurred as recently as November of 2023. While she did not find that the prison has a sexualized environment as alleged in a lawsuit, the judge wrote that she does not believe that sexual misconduct has been eradicated in FCI Dublin. The truth is somewhere in the middle. Allegations of sexual misconduct have Linger, but to characterize it as a to characterize it as pervasive go, goes too far, she wrote. However, and as the court finds herein because of its inability to promptly investigate the allegations that remain and the ongoing retaliation against incarcerated persons who report misconduct, 
BOP has lost the ability to manage with integrity and trust. The special master appointment follows days after the FBI searched the prison as part of an ongoing years-long investigation. The current warden has also been ousted after new allegations that his staff retaliated against an inmate who testified against the prison, according to government court papers filed Monday, and I have recently did an uh, episode about that. Despite recent attempts at reform, Rogers wrote last month that what the prison cannot seem to leave behind, however, is the suspicion that it is the system, not incarcerated women, that is being abused. So this is what's going on, and this is about maybe the fifth or sixth episode that we did in regards to FCI Dublin. So, you know, shout out to the woman for being strong and being survivors of making it out of the situation that they've gone through, right? And hopefully they continue to get support. Hopefully, you know, the courts continue to do the right thing as far as making sure that they're protected and that they're safe. And on the flip side, with the civil lawsuits, hopefully that, you know, they go uncontested and they be able to get uh, the financial means from the traumatic stuff they went through. So I'm just hoping that it continue to work out in their favor. And these are the prison stories that I wanted to give y'all today. It's a bunch of them. Hopefully... Y'all enjoyed them, so now it's time for the questions and comments that you may have for any one of these stories. And you can do that by calling 1-800-366-0911. That's 1-800-366-0911. Or send an email to stories at prisonaudio.com. That's S-T-O-R-I-E-S, the at sign, P-R-I-S-O-N-A-U-D-I-O dot com. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, at Prison Audio. Also, at Shaw John 1222, that's S-H-A-W-J-O-H-N-1222. Become a follower, right? We definitely support what everybody else is doing. Uh, don't forget to become a subscriber for free at Prison Audio. Our second page, at Sean Robert Johnson. Both of them on YouTube. And like I said, even though we do what we do with Prison Audio, we also support everybody else of what they're doing that's prison-related, prison too. So you definitely can come on here anytime and give an interview, right? If you want to contact me directly, you can on JPay. That's J-P-A-Y. Put in my number, 732-464-C. It's state of New Jersey. And if you need to write me directly, you got my name, Sean Robert Johnson, number 732-464-C. Uh, New Jersey State Prison, P.O. Box 861, Trenton, New Jersey, 08625. And I will always hit you back. But well, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Prison Audio with Sean Robert Johnson. That's me, your host. Everybody have a good and blessed day. And stay tuned for the next episode of Prison Audio coming soon.